Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Uh, my stream schedule is already kind of scuffed, so we're just we're gonna we're we're gonna be playing uh Phoenix right. We're gonna make it even more scuffed. Um, we're playing a Wednesday game on Friday. What is the world coming to? But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long I'll last. Um, tiredness wise. I got up earlier than I wanted to today to do school work for multiple hours. Um, so I am tired, more tired than I usually would be on a Friday. Um, but I will try to make that up to you tomorrow. I, depending on how I feel, I will try to stream tomorrow. Um, but I did, I did want to stream today, albeit just maybe a little bit. I. I don't know how long I'll be able to actually, uh, you know, keep going, but I'll try to at least make it to, like, a nice place to stop for the day. Um, I'm gonna try to put all my energy into my performances today for the voice acting. I will try, but... Until I get into it, there is no promises that everyone's, you know, that people are going to sound different. They're not going to sound different for a little bit because everyone's going to get this voice, which is my I'm tired voice. <laughs> so here we are. And just because the diary doesn't it like, I don't want people, I don't want y'all to think I'm, I'm bored or anything. I'm just tired. And I don't have the energy or willingness to uh, mask my tone right now. So monotone me is what you're getting for a bit until I get a little more energy back from playing video games. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh god damn it! I've drinking like my entire Dr. Pepper before I came. You know, that's probably why I'm tired. Anyway. Uh, I think it was on here. Yeah, it's trial- Alright, we're in the investigation portion. I don't know what quite we're investigating, but we're investigator and something. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard of these killings but me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there, in that file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. That means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together when she'd finished her work. Then, suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Go dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. Before he could, Dr. Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then... 
What happened? Uh, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for just an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I can still see it now. Permanent picture? I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be by Lana, why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forced the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumor is about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. What did you see in the instant that the crime occurred? Dark knocked, Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in the front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma, you've been through so much. Yeah, she's like, what, 15, 16 in this right now? So she'd be like 13, 14, I believe, right? I'm guessing her age right. If I'm well, not really guessing, but remembering her age right. Yeah, because she's, she's in high school right now. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. A few years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just said that. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I wanted to be able to fight crime with my testimonies and find evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think that I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Rodark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly, didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark, Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective? I'd better have another talk with her. Let's go talk to Lana, hopefully. L Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't find playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. 
Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana? Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about that unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely- I apologize for my aunt! Connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Dr. Officer Marshall can be. I don't know why I keep saying dog dirt. The trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Lana. Not Lana, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Gooden with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the de deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked for the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detecti detecti de detective was to gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 incident was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Oh! I apologize. I'm yawning. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes, Chief of Police, Deputy Chief Gant, and I shared the same office and the same investigation. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was a serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you jealous. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down and fled the room. From there he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filling some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, 
and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and laid unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma and carried her out of the room and just held her. Can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. But a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall, yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just not, might not be over yet. Hmm? Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the chief's office. The f site of the final SL9 murder. What is Phoenix cooking? What is Bro cooking? I don't know. I'm going here first, because... I want to come roll my bases. No one's here today. Not even the star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved it in court today that on court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 515. Yeah, I thought we were making finally making some headway in our case. But instead it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've gotta find all the answers by tomorrow. Covering all my bases. Mr. Edgeworth is in here. Maybe he's being questioned by an inquiry committee? He took a real beating in court today. Yeah, with Lana admitting to falsifying evidence two years ago. Guess we'll just have to come back later. Howdy, Bambina. My brain is still trying to place the song, and and it just it it can't. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Never thought things turned around. T thing things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. You said, I said, uh, you never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. How do you... How do you not water a cactus enough? Like, those... Those things need, like... So little water. You must have left it alone for, like, literal, like, a year. What the fuck? Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, Barton. Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If there ever was a case I need to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. 
Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? The, the murder weapon? You mean the switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Ducks, alright. But in the initial autopsy report, a question is raised. A uh, question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance the knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could be the facts have been concealed before the evidence. That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars of the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors? I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? It's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have been really close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered. And the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation save one was taken care of. And a star was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would got would get suspicious. Now nah, they were careful enough to not be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, Damon Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead, D Damon Gant, and his second in command, Lan Lan Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. The case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office. Oh, that was me. <laughs> After the case, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for this to happen. She's never been the same since he left. Hmm? Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different from when she was a detective. Now that he mentioned it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret? It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I wouldn't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. And then leaving with dumb music that... Oh... Damn. Damn, just the silence.
the silence as he leaves. Damn. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must be everybody's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial, there's more chaos going in there, going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is usually the word to use for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoes gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief office. <laughs> Oh my god. Bro, it's got a whole ass fucking organ in his room. And not like the tiny kind either. That thing's fucking massive. That's how he gets his theme song. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. Please, that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss ba Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Hey, that one I actually know. <laughs> That's the only one I do know. <laughs> On any kind of keyboard. And even that I'll be looking at for like a couple seconds before I'm like, oh yeah, it's that one. Okay, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm like moving myself around in my chair. Trying to get into a more comfy spot. I do apologize for my yawning into the microphone. I, yeah, I do apologize. Ah. Okay. Hmm? I gotta remember the tone, the mood, the the words that aren't coming to me right now that I had for Gant. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. I put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Rido, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've got my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Pro provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on that wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. The boss. This is Marshall Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. Oh, and the the thing has a sword on it. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. Take it over there. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, 
with this office? It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has been long since over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have her look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said that there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend to. Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? Gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Mm. Okay. Um. Oh. Hey, Belle! Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Say, have any of you, either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Ridgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor kept him safe from those who don't like him. I do apologize. Again, for my yawns, and two, if the, um, southern accent starts coming out in gumshoe for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's, it's, it's like, it's slowly creaking in to his voice right now. And I'm too tired to stop it. <laughs> but now with this, are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise at the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime, my treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out about anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall who was trying to protect some girl. Me. She's Detective Gum, she never realized that was the girl. <laughs> That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it has something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. It's written somewhere in here, okay? Powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Show him a murder weapon, I will do that. No Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. Damn, he did not age well. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killings? One day, on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident? An accident, yes, but transformed him into an animal. An animal? Like, look at him! Man does not look 42. Man looks like he's in his 50s. Oh shit, why is it going again? But when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came up. Finally, he turned himself in. 
I missed like half of that. Why? Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Bro, just d Fucking... Emma literally said me, and bro... Bro is not good at this. I'm about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag to attach to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since the case was closed, that knife has been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what an incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. And we traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. I have to take a good luck to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where it broken t the broken off tip was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should have Chief, chief Gant. It's not money, but it doesn't concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked, but we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. Well, a detective's ID card can open the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? And the but I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, Belle. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. In other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we can show him that'll make him change his mind. I don't know. Whoa. Let me share you a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll, uh, keep that in mind. Sheesh. Alright. Oh my god, I'm yawning, like, constantly. Y'all don't hear half of them, but, like...
What about that jar? I think I've seen it somewhere before. Somewhere... Maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant? Where could I have seen that before? In here! Yay! I figured it out. Let me show you- what? No. What? I thought- I thought that was it! I thought that was it. I used all my brain power. To do that. And then it just didn't work. Well, I know we've been literally only going for less than an hour, but I know I made some progress. My brain is like actually genuinely melting right now. I'm fucking eepy, dude. So yeah, maybe we'll, well, maybe we'll continue tomorrow if, if I feel up to streaming. We'll see, we'll see. I do apologize for these streams being so fucking short. Just fucking tired. It's my own fault. I did not need to get up that early, but I was like worried that I wouldn't get work done. I had a ton of it that I needed to get do, done. That I needed to get to. Uh, anyway, uh. Fucking falling asleep. Let me save before I fucking pass out. In my chair. Okay. So, although it was short, I do hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, we did- we did make some progress. I was hoping I could hold out a little longer before, like, I actually started falling asleep in my chair, but I am actually falling asleep in my chair. So... That'll be it for today. Yeah, I'm gonna try to fix the... YouTube upload schedule over the weekend, but no promises. But anyway, I hope you do did enjoy the stream. And I do hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.